Hey you and welcome back to the channel. Now this week we're gonna be talking about a feature that I haven't seen talked about too much for Resolve. I've actually seen it talked more about in terms of Premiere Pro. Now I believe this is a feature that's only available in the studio version of Resolve, but I highly recommend the studio version as well if you haven't upgraded already. And also if you're doing any kind of serious editing, I really think the studio version is the way to go. Now what am I talking about? I'm talking about the text editing feature that's available in both Resolve and in Premiere Pro, but do they work the same? Are there different functions? Is one better than the other? I don't know, because I haven't really used Premiere Pro much anymore. Actually, since I've switched to Resolve, I really haven't gone back and done too much except a few projects maybe here or there. But for the most part, all of my stuff has been in Resolve pretty much, I would say since the beginning of the year, I think when I dropped the video. If you guys want to see that video, by the way, talking about switching over to Resolve and the tips that I give for switching over, Link is down in the description below. Go check out that video after this one. And by the way, just before we jump into this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you have, thank you so much for supporting the channel this far. More videos to come, make suggestions down below because I am looking at your guys' comments as well. Uh, I think somebody suggested that I do an 8-bit video, how do I grade 8-bit uh, footage? That's actually a great idea, so I'm working on that video and I'll have it released as well. I think I have one video planned for next week after I release this one, and then I'll probably jump on and do that one after. Stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button down below as well just to get the video out to more people. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. So text-based editing, what is it and what is it useful for? Well, essentially, if you have a clip in Resolve or Premiere, they'll take that clip, transcribe it based off the audio, and then you can do things like edit based off of that transcript. Now, how does it work and what does it look like? Let's jump into Resolve and find out. So first, get into Resolve, and I have a clip here from my prior video. It's just the talking head, but that's one of the main reasons why I actually love this feature. And by the way, I'll get into more about what I use these features for and what I like about them, kind of the pros and cons, at the end of the video, so make sure you guys stick around. Now, if you edit any kind of talking head stuff, like if you make videos for YouTube or edit podcasts, then this feature is super helpful and will probably help you reduce the amount of time that you spend editing clips dramatically. It certainly has helped out for me. So if you select a clip and right click on it, there's this audio transcription option. You just hit transcribe and when it's done thinking, it'll pop up with this little text box. It usually takes a couple of minutes, especially the first time you do it. Also, the longer your clip is, generally the longer the transcription will take as well as it's sort of filtering through the audio. So if we look around, the first thing is we have a couple of options. We can jump in and make the text bigger or smaller here. So you can also like invert the background and that's if you wanna have it like in dark mode, you can have that. And then if not, you can choose the white background. There's also this little export button here. So when you're done looking through all of your text and done kind of your editing, or if you wanna strike something out, you can then export it as a text file and then you can upload it as subtitles, for example, if you need it. Now, when you click this export feature, you get an option to save it as a text file and it'll export that. Below that on the bottom, you have the option of creating a sub clip. So let's say I have some text here, for example, that I wanna export, uh, which is the text is just part of the clip, but if you wanna export it into sort of its own mini clip, then you can select that sentence, for example, then you click this button to create a sub clip and it'll ask me to name it. I can then create and in the media pool behind here, you'll see that there's a new sub clip in the media pool. If we play that clip, you'll see it's actually exactly what we highlighted from the transcription of the first clip. So I can also add markers along the way. So you have all your marker options down here as well. And the other cool thing is that you can put your cursor anywhere and just start playing from there on the clip and you'll see the video in the background follows along as well. You can also see the words moving along as you say them, so that's pretty cool. And then the last two buttons here are insert and append. This will give you the option to insert whatever you have highlighted where your playhead is or append it after the clip you're on. Now this can be useful when you first start editing a video and let's say you just wanna drop in a particular sentence from a clip. I can go and highlight that in the transcript here, exactly what I need, and then just hit insert. That puts just that section of the clip down on the timeline. Now, let's say I wanna keep going and then I select another piece that I want to follow after that. I can highlight the next portion and then hit the append button and you saw the clip down there on the timeline. It goes to the end of the timeline after the clip that was already in there. All right, the last little feature you can use, which I actually find the most useful, especially for my videos, is the delete silent portions feature. If you've been looking at the transcription as we've been going along here, you'll see that there are these little ellipses all over the place. 
Those are all the places where there's a pause in your video. If I actually click on one, you'll see it'll tell you exactly where in the video it is by putting these little in and out markers. Now, when I first import a clip in, all I have to do is come up here to this menu and it says remove silent portions. If you click that, it'll put a strike through all of the ellipses. And then what you can do is you can hit Command or Control A and then hit Append. From there, Resolve will actually drop in all of your clips on the timeline without any pauses and also edited so you have individual clips. That's really been a huge time saver for me, especially editing things like these YouTube talking head portions. Instead of having to sit there and filter through every single one of the pauses, even with my speed editor, it still takes quite a bit of time. So if I have a tool like this, I just hit remove silent portions, and then it'll go through the transcript, remove all of those, I have all the clips I need, and then really I can just do kind of one big pass through my edit to make sure everything is exactly where I want it, shape up some of the clips a little bit, but I don't have to spend a lot of time just going through pauses. Now let's jump over to Premiere Pro because I said I'd show you guys that and see if we have a similar experience with Premiere Pro as well. So in Premiere, I have the same clip uploaded to the project and all I did was put it on the timeline here. Next, you just need to head over to the text panel and if that's not open or if you don't see it, then make sure you go up to the top menu here and find the window menu. Then make sure the text panel is selected and it should pop up and then you can move it around or rearrange it where you need it. If it's still hidden for you guys, you might have to click on one of the windows, do this little arrow feature here and it'll show you all the hidden windows in that, in that panel and the text panel might actually be buried in there, so just make sure you guys find it first and click on text. Now, I ran into this problem too, but if you guys don't see any text in the actual window, just make sure that your clip is selected and it should populate and pop up with all the text there as well. Just a quick look at the panel, you actually appear to have largely the same options that you have in Resolve. So up top, you have your search bar to search through text, lift and extract to cut the little clips that you need, a captions button in order to generate captions off of the transcript. Now, side note, by the way, Resolve actually has a feature because I didn't cover it in the first part of this video, but it does have a feature to give you captions off your video and your audio, but you don't have to go through the transcription slash text feature in order to get there. There's actually just a create captions button in Resolve and it'll populate it on the subtitles little video layer. So you can do that without having to go through text. One thing that's a little bit different is that Premiere will actually show you the pauses much in the same way that Resolve does, but I didn't see an option to cut out all the pauses. It looks like you'll have to go through and remove them one by one. I like the Resolve option better to remove all of the pauses and it cuts your clips up into individual clips. I just think that that's a lot more useful. This way with Premiere, I still have to go through and de hit delete on each one of the pauses individually. And while it does adjust your timeline based on the edits that you make on the text, which is another thing that Resolve doesn't really do, I find it more useful if Premiere just had an option where you can hit remove pauses and then it would do all of that for you. Just as a workflow thing, that works a lot better for me. Then again, if you edit a lot based on this text feature, it might work better the Premiere Pro way where you can just go delete each pause individually and then rearrange it however you see fit. If you click on the pause in Premiere, it'll actually tell you how long they are and show you where they're located in the timeline. So that's actually a pretty cool feature as well. I also found that with Premiere, you can edit your video straight from the text as well. So for example, if you highlight a portion of the transcript, you can actually hit like Command X or Control X and cut it and then paste it somewhere else and it'll update the timeline for you and move that portion of the clip to where you pasted it. I haven't found a way to do that in Resolve, but you can sort of work around it by just highlighting the parts you need and then inserting that portion somewhere else in your timeline. Either way, it's still a really nifty feature and I like the way it works in Premiere a little bit better. All right, so just to wrap this video up now, based on what I saw from Premiere versus Resolve, I feel like the Premiere feature is a little bit more fleshed out, especially with like, cutting the, the text and pasting it somewhere else that you need it and it updates your timeline automatically. Or for example, when you highlight a pause, it shows you exactly where that pause is on your timeline directly. And then when you cut it out, it does the edit right there in the timeline for you. I find that to be a little bit more fleshed out and more useful as opposed to the Resolve version where you really can't move any of the text around. It doesn't update your timeline. Most of the time, even if you click on something like a pause or highlight a sentence, it'll usually do it in your media viewer browser, not really straight on the timeline. So that to me just feels a little bit worse than the Premiere version. 
Now for what I need it for, the Resolve version actually works really well because mainly what I use it for is just cutting out pauses. So, so far it's been a great feature because it's really sped up my workflow. If you like text-based editing though, and you really like the features that Premiere provides, I do think that Premiere is a little bit better fleshed out than the Resolve version. So really text editing just seems to be integrating AI into the video editing workflow, which was something we all knew was gonna happen. Resolve has been working towards it, Premiere has been working towards it as well. I say if it makes the job easier and it doesn't cut out the artist portion of what you're doing, I welcome it because like this, for example, cutting out pauses has done wonders to speed up making these videos as well. Whereas before it took me quite a long time to go through the timeline and cut out every single pause, now I can do it with the click of a button. So really it's more of a convenience thing than anything else. All right, now let's talk about where a feature like this would be useful. So for one, YouTube talking head stuff like the stuff I'm doing right now, Interview clips, a lot of time the interviewer will be asking questions of the interviewee, and sometimes the person will take a second to think about their responses. Those are all pauses that you can cut out, and also it you can see clearly where the interviewer asked their questions as well, and just cut those out of the transcript directly. I think that's a really big help as well. So mostly just talking head stuff, but that's really what benefits the most. Now let's talk about where text-based editing really fails, or it's not really that useful at all, and that would be things like cutting B-roll, for example. Since most of B-roll is silent, doesn't really have spoken words, there's not much text editing to do on those clips, so you're still gonna have to go through those and choose just the select portion portions of the b-roll that you want to use. Also, narrative films. I don't think that text-based editing would work really well on narrative filmmaking because narrative film and dramatic filmmaking really kind of lives or dies based on its pacing, especially for dialogue scenes. So a lot of times little pauses here and there and reaction times, things that don't have text to them, are really key for dramatic series. If you don't go through and edit exactly the portions that you need, exactly how the editor wants it done, then your dramatic film or narrative film will typically not sound very great, especially for the dialogue. One place in narrative filmmaking where I actually found that it can be helpful though is the search feature that you get in both Premiere and Resolve. For example, if you know that an actor said a line, especially if you remember the way that they said it, you can quickly just search in the text bar and it'll find that clip for you, especially when you're searching through your reel and you don't wanna go through all of that footage especially if you don't know exactly where it was. So that I can see being a really useful feature and it might cut down on some time with editing as well. All right, that's where I'm gonna leave it for this video. So like I said, if you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, especially if you learned something from this video or if you like this video, hit the like button down below. Give me your comments as far as what you'd like to see in terms of videos. I, like I said, I do listen to them and I do read them and I try to respond to everybody that comments. So thank you so much for your guys' support. I look forward to uploading more videos to the channel now that I have a little bit more time. And if you stuck with me thus far, thank you so much. Until next time, go out there and create something. Lot of it.